now. I want to do something here this evening. Maybe change things around a little bit here uh, the rest of the time and see if we can come up with something. On this side over here, I want to put justify. I want to be justified before God. I want to be innocent before God, and that's what the word justify means. In other words, if I was in that courtroom that I talked to you about just now, and I was found guilty, how can I be innocent? There is no way I can be innocent without dying. But if I die, I'm a goner. So I must have a substitute in death. So Jesus Christ dies for me. And so I look on this side, justification. What will balance the scales? Well, I can put over here the grace of God. The grace of God is based upon the fact that Jesus Christ died for me. In other words, I must look, as it were, through the cross to balance the scales. If I go around the cross, I cannot be in the grace of God. If I bypass the cross and go to an altar and lay my sacrifice on the altar, what sacrifice can you give unto God that will satisfy God? You would be bringing reproach upon the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ at Calvary to try to offer some sacrifice after Jesus Christ sacrificed his life for you. So there isn't any other way. So I am justified by grace. Turn please to Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3. All right, in Titus chapter 3, notice in verse 4. Titus 3 verse 4. But after that the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Justified by his grace. Now, how could God Almighty be gracious unto you? Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sin. Without the gospel of Christ, there could be no justification. Turn please to Romans and look in Romans chapter 1. In Romans chapter 1, everything is going to center around this. In Romans chapter 1, let's start in verse 15. So much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it, the gospel of Christ, it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now watch closely. For therein, what? The gospel. Therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just, or the justified, the just shall live by faith. All right then, I cannot have the grace of God without the justification of Calvary. I cannot be in God's grace and walk in God's grace and have the forgiveness of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7 that's based upon His grace. I can have none of that without this. And I feel like I'm a total failure to you here this evening. You see, the point is, there are so many people tonight to say, I'm not unhappy with my religion. I love my religion, and I don't want you to talk to me about this. And I, how many have I ever had tell to me, uh, Brother Moore, I went to the altar, and I prayed at the altar, and I repented of my sins, and I laid all my sins down there, and I begged God with tears to forgive me, and God forgave me. How do you know God forgave you? Because the preacher told me, or I went forward and I repeated the sinner's prayer, 
and on and on. And folks, it's pathetic. It's pathetic. There can be no grace. You cannot have God's favor without this. It's impossible. The gospel. What is the gospel? Jesus Christ died for our sins and that He was buried and that He rose again the third day. And if you do not believe any point of that, you're lost. The people at Corinth that didn't believe it. They argued about the resurrection. They didn't believe in the resurrection. Well, then they didn't believe the gospel. You know, there's people now who will... Who will who will say, I understand that, but there's more to it. You have to do more. Uh, they're just, you've got to give up. You've got to say, I can't help myself. Well, the, pro the problem, Frank, is that if you are dead, what more can you do? In other words, if God required your death, and you have a substitute that dies in your stead, what more is there to offer? There is no more. Now, so on the other side over here, I'm going to put righteousness. How can I be righteous? Well, righteousness is by blood. Turn to your Bible, please. Justification, righteousness, by blood. Turn, please, to Romans chapter 5. In Romans, let, let, let's start in 4. I, I apologize to you. Let's start in 4. In Romans chapter 4, uh, verse 4. Now to him that worketh, that is, does righteous works to gain favor from God. To him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of death. But to him that worketh not, he does no work of righteousness. He does not keep the law. He has never kept the law. He does not repent and get baptized for remission of sin. Last week we tried to deal with the fact that, that baptism is a work of righteousness. We tried to show in the Scriptures that this is true. Uh, to you that watched the program on Sunday morning, I, I tried to show that. Uh, imagine... A field of workers. There they are out there. They're just toiling away, picking cotton. There's one fellow sitting in the shade. He isn't doing anything but relaxing. So we say, well, what's going on out here? I mean, everybody else out here is just hot and sweaty, and they're just toiling away, and picking this cotton and everything, and there's Dub over there under a tree, and he's not hitting a lick at a snake. I mean, he ain't doing nothing. So, uh, the time comes to pay off. Dub is paid equal to everybody else, and he had not picked a bowl. So we say, this is unjust. This cannot be. Find out that someone else volunteered and did all the work in his stead. And he's sitting there relaxed, drinking mint juleps. Do you ever drink a mint julep? He's just cool as a cucumber. Why? Somebody else did the work for him. Now look at the passage again, verse 5. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. In other words, this man here sees the cross, recognizes that Jesus Christ died in his stead, suffered, bled, and died for him. The blood was shed for him and the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses him from all unrighteousness. By the death of Christ, the scales are balanced.
and the arrow points to perfectness. And so when God looks at this believer, according to the scales, he sees this man is perfect. Say, but he's a sinner. But he's perfect by faith in that another accomplished the work for him by dying at Calvary in his stead. There's nothing difficult about any of this except believing it. The more that you're brainwashed into believing that there's something you have to do before or after to gain justification, the harder it is to accept all this at face value and say, I'd rather be in hell with the Lord than to be in heaven without him. You say you believe you're going to end up in hell. I say, okay, I'd rather be in hell with the Lord than to be in heaven without him. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. I have trusted Him as my Lord and Savior. He died for my sins. He paid for my sins at Calvary. I'm justified by the faith of Christ. I'm justified by God Almighty, according to Romans chapter 8. And if none of this is true, what in the world are we doing in this building tonight? This is a waste of time if this is not true. All right? Righteousness, justification. It's by grace, it's by blood, and it's by faith. Uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at Romans chapter 5, verse 9. Let's, let's start in verse 6. Uh, it would be better if we do that. Romans 5, verse 6, For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. In other words, Christ died for those who need a Savior. The illustration. Jesus said two men went in the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee. One was a publican. He said the Pharisee prayed thus with himself, and he said, God, I thank you that I'm not as other men are. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And finally, he points out that publican there, and he said, I'm glad I'm not like him. Jesus Christ said that publican would not even lift up his eyes toward heaven. He was ashamed. He was guilty. He was ashamed of his guilt, but smote on his breast, signifying that he was worthy of death and said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Jesus Christ said, that man went away justified rather than the other. Well, God was merciful to you, a sinner, when he gave Christ to die for your sins at Calvary. The mercy is available to whosoever will receive Christ. All right, in uh, verse uh, 8, But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. Verse 10, For if when we were enemies, we're reconciled to God by the death of his Son. Now go back to verse 9. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we should be saved from wrath through him. Well, then we've nothing to fear. If we're justified by His blood, if we're saved by His grace, justified by His grace, through the gospel of Christ, Christ already paid for our sins. The wrath fell on Christ in our behalf. Why should we fear when people tell us, well, you better store up for the tribulation? Why? Oh, because you're going through the tribulation. Well, we're saved from the wrath of God by the justification that's ours in Christ. Let's try again. Justification, righteousness, and salvation is by faith, is by grace, is by blood. Notice in Romans chapter 3. Romans 3, verse 28. Verse 28. 
Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Now, that brings me back to chapter 4, verse 5. But to him that worketh not, what kind of work could you do that would satisfy your sin debt? Couldn't even die, could you? See, because if you died in your sin, then later on you would face God at the great white throne judgment and hear Him say, Cast this individual into a lake of fire, depart from me, you work of iniquity, and you'd go screaming into eternal damnation, which is called the second death. So you would go into eternal death. So what's the moral to all this? The moral to all this is that there is absolutely nothing that any of us in this room can do to justify ourselves. Why? We would have to be righteous for God to justify us. Well, we don't have any work of righteousness that we can do to accomplish that feat. We cannot balance the scales. So what's the answer? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Trust Jesus Christ with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. You know, uh, just two weeks ago, my wife and I went up to Alabama because her a uh, nephew uh, had died. He was a basketball coach. He was a, he was a great basketball player, and he was a coach up in Alabama, and he was a coach down in, in Florida. And he was well known. And Randy, who used to come to the Bible class here, was one of his players. Randy was just, he, he spoke very well of Wayne as a coach. Two years ago, Wayne told Bernice that the doctor told him that his days were numbered. And uh, so he got his house in order, so to speak. And so he, we went, to, went up there. We didn't go to his funeral because I had a class in Birmingham that night that he was buried that afternoon, and so we went on. But the point was... He knew. You don't. So this past weekend, we were back up there and went to visit my sister. I hadn't seen her in a, over a year. And my sister's in very bad health. And I was very concerned about her and got there and found that I should have been concerned about her husband because he's in worse condition. Come on, folks. Sin takes its toll in every one of us. None of us in this room know how long we've got. But we know something. We know that God would have all men to be saved and come under the knowledge of the truth. We know that God loved us by the fact that he gave his son to die for us. We know that Jesus Christ's death at Calvary was sufficient to put us in the grace of God. His bloodshed was sufficient to cleanse us and justify us and make us righteous before God Almighty. We know those things. Why take a chance? Why fool around with this thing? Why say, well, maybe there'll be a possibility that down the road some way, somehow, I'm going to be able to work this thing out and I realize that I need to get saved. I realize I need to trust the Lord. No, do it now. Tonight, if there is a question in your mind, if there is a question in your heart, if there is any feeling of conviction or, or uneasiness about your salvation, make it right. Right now, how can you do that? Trust the Lord as your Savior. Right now, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Right now, 
Assure yourself of that thing here this evening. Don't play around with this. God will save you, justify you, clear you, and make you perfect in His sight, even though you be a sinner in other people's sight. Thank you for being here this evening. We're dismissed.